Democracy 2014, where we are giving the candidates for governor here in Maryland three questions to better inform you. And we're joined now featuring the Republican candidate Larry Hogan joining us right now. Sir, thanks for the time today. Thank you very much for having me. An opening statement if you'd like. Well, I'm not a professional politician. I've spent most of my life in the private sector. I founded a business uh, for 25 years. I've been bringing hundreds of companies and thousands of jobs into Maryland. Uh, I didn't have any real b burning desire to be anything, but I, uh, I, had an ob I felt an obligation that I needed to do something. And I decided to run for governor because I thought that we were way off track and heading in the wrong direction. And I thought that the people of Maryland deserved to have a real clear choice for a change. Uh, about three years ago, I started a group called Change Maryland that is a nonpartisan group that's grown into the largest uh, grassroots movement in the state with 87,000 people. Um, and I've been traveling across the state. I've had the opportunity to talk with people from all walks of life. And I, what I hear everywhere is frustration. Uh, people feel a real disconnect between Annapolis and the rest of Maryland. And I think an overwhelming majority of Marylanders would like to see uh, a real change of direction in Annapolis. And I'm, I'm running because I think it's about time that the politicians in Annapolis started listening to the rest of us. All right, sir, three questions for you. As we said earlier, the first regarding health care. The Maryland Health Connection website rollout was a mess. And as governor, what would you do to right that ship for future enrollment periods? Well, it's been an unmitigated disaster. We've actually had the worst rollout of any state in the nation. We're the first state to abandon our, our plans. We've wasted $300 million of hard-earned tax dollars from our citizens. And 75,000 Marylanders have already lost their health care coverage. It's, uh, it's the worst example of mismanagement that we've seen in state government. Um, and we need to immediately stop the spending. Here's, uh, we've, we've wasted $300 million. We've gone through three different contractors. This administration simply cannot manage this effort. Uh, we're now talking about spending $60 million to go to uh, rent a site from Connecticut. Um, I would say stop spending completely, shut it down. Uh, Virginia, for example, our next door neighbor, Virginia said, we have great private sector exchanges and you have a federal site and uh, they didn't do any state site at all. They've signed up four times as many people as Maryland has uh, without spending any money. We've wasted $300 million. So I would uh, stop the presses, uh, stop wasting the taxpayers money. And I think we need a full and complete investigation uh, into how this happened. Uh, the, the taxpayers deserve an explanation from Governor O'Malley and Anthony Brown. All right, our second question right now involves the legalization of marijuana. We know that come October, it will no longer be a crime to possess small amounts of marijuana. And do you see this as a step toward legalizing marijuana in the future? And if so, do you support that move? Uh, hopefully not. You know, I, I think that we really ought to be very cautious on this issue. It's, be, it's become uh, something that people are talking about all over the country, but we've had two states that have tried it. Um, I think we ought to go very cautious and see what happens in these other states before we consider doing it. Uh, the governor of Colorado just uh, expressed his caution about it and said he thinks there's a lot of unintended consequences uh, and, and unforeseen circumstances that they didn't anticipate. And he, he urged other states to be cautious. And I think that's exactly what we ought to do. I, I don't support it at this time. Um, and I think we ought to go very slow. I don't think we ought, we ought to be encouraging uh, the use of marijuana at this point in time. All right, our final question right now involves industry. As you know, the Port of Baltimore is now revamping, so supercargo ships can now come into those ports. But there's the issue right now of building a train and truck terminal large enough to get those giant cores and those, those kind of giant containers in. What do you do as governor to move that project along? Well, it's really one of the most important things, and it will be a top priority of my administration. Luckily, uh, we have this, a great asset in the Port of Baltimore, and uh, we're one of two ports on the entire East Coast that can accommodate the new larger ships that are coming through the Panama Canal. But we have a real bottleneck at, at the, at the Howard, uh, Howard Street Tunnel, which is, was built in 1895 um, and hasn't been upgraded. And we need this intermodal uh, truck and train terminal in order to get it done. Uh, CSX has worked on this for four years and actually had all, all of the acquisitions done and was ready to move forward. And politics and politicians have slowed it down and stopped it. it we have to get it done because uh, we, we can't take advantage of our port without fixing. If, if the goods can't get out of the port and out to other places in the country, it does us no good. So it would be a number one priority of ours would be to build the intermodal um, uh, station so we can accommodate all this and get the things done. It opens up the entire East Coast and part of the Midwest to our goods that are coming through the uh, port. 
And I'd also focus on fixing that tunnel that hasn't been fixed since Glover, Grover Cleveland was president. I have to cut you off right there. Republican candidate for governor, Mr. Larry Hogan, sir, thank you for the time today. Thank you. Now to see this interview and all interviews in the race for governor, go to abc2news.com. There you can click on the news tab and then the political tab for all the information you need.